Hey guys, it's Danny with Boss C Three Five Ones Productions. Here's a little bit of an update for you. I am still waiting for parts for this 2011 3.5 EcoBoost. I've been waiting for parts since the first of November. It's right after I got the whole thing tore, tore down to a part. You see here, I've got all the parts of this 11. F-150 King Ranch laying out. There's some of the scrap parts back there in the back. There's old Cleveland. If you guys have watched my video about my Mustang GT, that's a Cleveland out of it. Of course, I took it out when the TCI transmission gave up on me after 100 miles. Now the 11's gonna get a brand new block. You know what I mentioned in my my one of my other videos that shouldn't be anything wrong with the block. Well, come to find out, once I got it tore apart, I had a piston, it looked like it hydrolocked from oil uh, being sucked in the engine from the intercooler. It hydrolocked, exploded the piston. When it exploded the piston, the rod went crazy, went through both sides of the block. Yeah, I said that the, the block didn't, there's no way the block had a hole in it. I didn't think there was one until I got the motor mounts off. You couldn't see the hole for the motor mounts. So yeah, it's got a brand new block. And I also had to replace one of the heads. Some of the, some of the junk parts that hit the head on the bottom side. He had nicked it, but I'm not going to take any chances on it. So I went in and replaced the head. I'm waiting for parts on these. The little uh, bow spring cups. So once you have the, mach the heads machined, you've got to go back and remeasure everything for uh, replacement uh, bow spring cups. Make sure they fit correctly and you have the right clearances. We'll talk about that during the build-up video. But like I said, this is all of the 11 F-150 King Ranch laying here on the floor. And on the by the on the meantime. Of course, this is not the Levin King Ranch I've shown you. In the meantime, a gentleman contacted me and, and basically shipped me his truck. This is a 13 Platinum. He was able to drive it about 2,000 miles after he bought it, and then it would not crank up anymore. So as you can see, I've got this truck laying out over here on the other side of the shop. Completely tore down. <clears throat> the history on this truck, they went in and replaced the turbos. No idea what turbos were on it. But looks like they put in some eBay slash Amazon turbos in it. And we're going to go ahead and, and replace these turbos because there's coolant leaking out. There was some oil leaking out, brand new install. They, they installed them through the fenders, like I said, you shouldn't do. They didn't, and boy, this thing was leaking, leaking oil all over the driver's side. It was really bad. I've cleaned this one up quite a bit, but you can see, you know, there's a little bit of oily greasy left. This was after washing the heck out of this engine, or out of this engine bay. But we've ordered some brand new Garrett turbos for this one. I'm just doing a little cleaning. Some of these just, this, this, uh, some of the scrap left over, I haven't thrown in the scrap bin just yet. But you <clears throat> may get a two for one on the build up videos. I'm gonna show you how to build an 11 and a 12 3.5 eco boost and then we're gonna build a 13 I may just put the videos one after the other I don't have the uh, 13 engine here it's in the machine shop right now and I'll show you some of the some of the small differences between the 11 and 12 and 13 mainly mainly there's the vacuum pumps missing on the back of the head on the uh, passenger side back of the head it's installed on the front of the truck up here on the 11 and 12 trucks. 
when I say vacuum pump, that's what I'm talking about. Now this is off the 13. This is incorporated in the back of the 13 and it's connected to the camshaft, the exhaust camshaft. As you can see, this, this 13 was in pretty bad shape. You say it jumped timing. It was really, really, really dirty on the inside. It's like they changed the oil maybe every 10,000 miles or more. But this was the culprit. This is why it jumped timing. This thing was so gummed up when the chain stretched and the, and the uh, tensioner guy was supposed to adjust for it, it wouldn't adjust. It was gummed up. So instead of coming out, it just stuck. So when I, of course, when I opened it up, I was able to move the chain tensioner back and forth. And when you move it back and forth, you can see that it slacked the chain down to the crankshaft. So they may have just jumped one tooth. But guys, if it jumps one tooth, if it jumps at all, this is gonna be the result. You see those little marks right here, right there, right there. These are interference engines. And this is what they mean by interference. Every single intake valve hit the piston on this engine. Thank goodness it didn't hit the, the piston while it was running is because they were trying to turn it over and try to figure out why the engine wouldn't start. When we were turning it over, they were hitting and slapping every single time it rotated over. I just want to give you guys an update. It's gonna happen. It's just, like I said, I'm waiting on parts. Right now, waiting on the machine shop. Uh, to get his parts processed. But like I say, when it happens, we're gonna build up both engines. You should have a good idea how to build an 11 and 12 and a 13 up once we get finished with the videos. Once again, this is Daniel with Boss C351's Productions. I wanna thank you for watching my videos. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Till next time.